Coming up on this week's news, a high-profile manufacturer of battery systems quits the UK market, National Grid's controversial plan to move metres to the garden sparks uproar in the trade, and can you connect a 3 kilowatt immersion to a 13-amp fused unit? The answer isn't as simple as you think. Welcome to Electrical News Weekly, whether you're listening in the van, on site or down at the wholesale counter. I'm Joe Robinson and I've been through the best of the electrical industry news to save you the trouble. This week the recording studio is being powered by our friends over at Consumer Unit World with high stock levels of your favourite consumer units including BG and free next working day delivery on orders over £150. We're being lit by Flex 7 with their lightning fast pre-wired modular lighting connection system that keeps your installation times razor sharp. And if you think you've spotted the two words that I've been challenge to slip into this week's show comment with them below for the chance to win a prize and while you're there click the links to check out what our sponsors offer huawei is quitting the uk battery business the high profile chinese company will stop selling its lunar branded battery systems by the end of the year it includes the full range of energy storage modules bundles and inverters which was aimed at the residential sector it's understood that distributors have been told to sell off current stocks but not to give extended warranties. Sources tell eFix that the pullout from the highly competitive market was a commercial decision. Tech News site The Register says that battery packs represented a small fraction of the brand's sales in the UK. Meanwhile, in Australia, Tesla is recalling thousands of its Powerwall 2 battery packs over a fear of fire. Homeowners down under report that units have burst into flames and damaged property. The company said it's identified a safety concern with a batch of lithium battery cells sourced from a third-party supplier. Tesla said it would remove and replace all the affected power walls under its warranty at no cost to customers. Back in the UK, electricians have been reacting to National Grid's controversial plans to site meter boxes not inside properties, but in cabinets on the boundary. It wants households to use three-phase power, not single-phase, and says its idea will revolutionise domestic electricity connections in the UK. But the trade wasn't convinced and took to social media to voice its concerns in a tirade that was as fiery and bitter as watercress dipped in vinegar. Many thought the scheme was cost-driven rather than what was best for the consumer. Some were worried about damage and interference to boxes located by a pavement. Others point out that on continental Europe, energy companies have been installing three-phase into new domestic properties for decades. Jeremy Barker wondered how the method would work on open plan estates and with terraced houses. Sergio Fernandez from the Costa del Watford asked how they could address issues with SWA glanding and termination, as well as SWA with exposed single cables. Not all thought it was a bad idea, however. Electrician John Barrington said he would welcome a cabinet in his garden as it would get rid of his overhead connection. The NIC and the ECA have yet to comment on the proposals. Now, Quiz time. Can you connect a 3 kilowatt immersion heater to a 13 amp fused unit? As Sir Winston Churchill had it, it's a riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma. The question has led to many a pub argument in the trade, but the IET has now stepped into the row, effectively saying, hold my beer. The boffins from the institution say two factors are key to the solution. The first, what nominal voltage you use. The second, how long the immersion will run for. Most immersion heaters in the UK are rated 3 kilowatts at a nominal voltage of 240 volts. But BS7671 says you should use 230 volts, not 240 for your calcs. So, using good old Ohm's law and the power formula, you can work out the resistance of the heating element and then use that to work out the load at 230 volts. The answer you'll get is about 12 amps, which is clearly below the 13 amp rating of the fuse and connection unit. But immersions can run at load for up to two hours, and fluctuations in supply can add another 10% to the voltage. The IET points out that the maximum domestic appliance loads that use full power for periods above 30 minutes connected to BS1363 plugs and fuse connection units is limited to 2.7 kilowatts or 11.7 amps. So that's a no. And before you can say, but kettles, they only use their maximum power for a short time. What about a three kilowatt immersion heater rated at 230 volts? Here, the rated current exceeds 13 amps, so that's a straight no too. The answer is settled then. The IET is showing all its workings in the latest advisory. I've put a link to that in the show notes. In other news, Schneider Electric's 42 million pound new factory in Scarborough is up and running. The site is three times the size of the previous plant and will specialize in low voltage switchgear and smart feeder pillars. It will eventually add 200 jobs to the 450 already employed there. Now we turn to products and the big news here is the release of the world's first portable electric conduit bender. The battery operated kit from the Milwaukee M18 range is designed for on-site use. It will do over a hundred bends on a single charge. You simply pop in your conduit, dial in whatever angle you want and push the button. It's just been launched in the States at a price of $3,000, about 2,200 quid. We'll let you know the second it hits the UK and of course eFix will be first in the queue for a bench test. Mega has unveiled a tester for technicians who may 
maintain electric vehicles. The EV T100 is a compact handheld unit that does all the tests you'll need. These include insulation resistance testing up to 1000 volts, low resistance bond testing, continuity and diode testing, and DC voltage measurement with polarity check. It has a simple user interface and incorporates safety features that stop the testing if it's not connected properly or if you try to use it outside its operational range. There's an option of two, three, and four wire low resistance testing, which could be used, for example, to verify the bonding of metal parts. The insulation resistance testing function offers automatic temperature compensation and a guard terminal is provided to eliminate the effects of surface leakage. This could otherwise lead to inaccurate results. The unit can store 256 test results, which you can download later with a standard USB memory stick. A reminder that this month there's an exclusive eFix discount code for the Spurlock. This is a safety device invented by Birmingham electrician Neo Mosudisa. Mosudisa once had to isolate a faulty water cooler, but realised there was nothing suitable. That evening he came up with the idea for the Spurlock. It's a fuse spur lockout kit which makes safe isolation easier. A clear label warns occupants and shows who locked out the unit. It's made from tough ABS plastic and complies with the 18th edition. Until the end of the month you can use the code S4S25 to get 15% off the recommended retail price. I'll put the details in the show notes in case you want to bag a bargain. You can also see Spurlock in real life at the Solar and Storage show from Tuesday the 23rd of September to Thursday the 25th of September at the NEC in Birmingham. Also at the show will be fast-growing wholesaler Trade Sparky. Its extensive stock includes over 50,000 product lines supplied from 47 strategically located warehouses across the UK. It offers same-day dispatch and next-day delivery for in-stock items. This is complemented by a sourcing department that prides itself on getting hard to find goods, ensuring that electricians have access to everything they need for a job. The Solar Sparky division is where you'll find all the latest renewable kit. This includes PV panels, inverters, battery packs, mounting systems, and EV chargers. The company gets a stonking 4.6 on Trustpilot from its customers. The electric heating company has unveiled a range of mobile boilers. These are lifesavers for emergency heating or planned maintenance during shutdowns. They're also great for events or building sites and as backup for schools, hospitals, and factories. The firm's bestseller is the Comet, which is configurable on-site and comes in three models with ratings of up to 8 kilowatts at 230 volts, 14.4 kilowatts at 240 volts and up to 24 kilowatts at 400 volts. The Mercury range has two models and is ideal for wet central heating systems and underfloor heating. Model 1 has a power rating of 4.4 kilowatts at 240 volts and Model 2 is 26 kilowatts at 400 volts. We're hoping to put one through its paces to keep Joe 3PO and his little 3PO's warm through the winter as his extension continues to become wet the tight. Click the link in the show notes for more information on the boiler, not Joe's extension. Now, imagine you want to heat a bathroom. Do you choose an electric towel rail? Or what about a booster fan heater for fast warmth? Well, now you don't have to choose, as Stellrad has just come out with a range of combination products, and pretty stylish it is too. This is the Agatha E Flow, and you can see the booster neatly tucked in at the bottom. Both options can be used independently or together. There's a five year warranty on heating parts and three height options. Two colours are available white and anthracite grey. The matte black and white panel heaters from Airmaster are IP24 rated and suitable for bathroom use beyond zone 2. They feature user-friendly soft touch buttons and an LED backlit display for low light use. You only use four buttons, so programming is quick and easy. The units feature a minimalist vent-free design while maintaining even heat distribution. They're easy to install thanks to a pre-mounted wall bracket. Meanwhile, Dimplex is currently marketing its quantum high heat retention storage heaters. The company says these can help reduce energy bills through its efficient use of off-peak electricity. It's SAP accredited, recognising its energy saving potential to help improve the EPC score of a home. Quantum has three customizable heating timers, each with four time and temperature settings for each day of the week. It can also intelligently adapt to match the climate and your customer's lifestyle, delivering heat only when it's needed. Quantum has a built-in radio frequency module, which allows you to control it remotely using the Dimplex Control smartphone app and Dimplex Control Hub. Now, it's that great moment where we get to celebrate the sterling work being done by the next generation. Our learner of the week this week is Sam Nason. Big congratulations are in order as Sam's just been recognised as the full-time learner of the year by Derby College. That was the award provided by the team here at eFix and the college themselves chose Sam as its winner. On his LinkedIn profile, you'll find loads of his practical work displayed, which really shows off the breadth of the syllabus they need to tackle to complete the hands-on elements of the course. He's also highlighted the extra certificates he's picked up through the eFix CPDs, which adds even more weight to his efforts. All in all, Sam is ticking all the right boxes, a solid example of the kind of learner we want to celebrate. And there's more 
Melbourne News for Learners, eFix has set up a dedicated LinkedIn group for people training in the electrical industry. It's got the full support of friend of the parish, Chris Horn. The new group is aimed at apprentices, full-time learners and adults retraining in the evening. Just log on to LinkedIn and search for UK Electrician Apprenticeships and Career Support. I'll also put a link in the show notes. And now to the lighter side of the electrical news. Yes, it's time for a tea break with Quickwire and their range of incredibly rapid electrical connectors. Solar panels are great at converting the sun's energy into power, but they need protection from UV rays, and that's a problem as UV films aren't very sustainable. But now, boffins in Finland have found the answer. Onions. Red onions, to be precise. The scientists tried lots of biomaterials as UV films, but the onion extract beat the lot hands down, including PET, as it provides 99.9% protection. That's going to smell amazing in the summer months, isn't it? It'll be like the whole neighbourhood is just frying onions for a barbecue. That's the lighter side of the news in our tea break with Quickwire and their range of incredibly rapid electrical connectors. Click the link in the description to check them out for yourself. Game week five is over and out, and what a slog it was. The average score across the league was only 40 points, so if you managed more than that, well done. I, on the other hand, had an absolute shocker. Just 28 points. I captained Palmer, who was subbed in the 23rd minute, and I left some big points rotting away on the bench. Everything that could go wrong, did. Brutal week, but hey, plenty of games left, still to play. Let's get into it. First up, the Marshall Tuflex Team of the Week goes to Dean Senior, who put up a strong 70 points by bravely handing the armband to Haaland against Arsenal. Risky move capturing Haaland against the Gunners, but when the big man's in form, you could stick him against a brick wall and he'd probably still bag a hat-trick. Hats off, Dean. Next, the EV Blocks Defence of the Week belongs to Great FC, Jürgen Groseb. His defence stood tall, hauling 34 points across the back line. And yes, he even captained Mark Guahy. Captaining a defender is a gutsy move, but like an EV block, it held firm. Maybe we've been doing this all wrong. Forget strikers, just stick the armband on a centre-back and watch the clean sheets roll in. Now for the TIS transfer of the week. Let's keep it simple. If you don't have Haaland in your squad by now, you're doing it wrong. The towering Norwegian has already scored six goals this season. And next week, he's up against Burnley, a team that's conceded the fifth most goals in the league so far. In other words, Get him in, captain him, and enjoy the points. Sometimes FPL really is as simple as that. Finally, the fuse box flyer of the week goes to it switched off Matthew Hawkins, who hit the bench boost button and powered up to 66 points, climbing more than 100 places up the table. That's less it switched off and more it switched on. Hats off to you, Matthew. Keep that up and soon you'll be flying into the top 10. That's a wrap for game week five. Big thanks to all our band partners for keeping the league buzzing week in, week out. And don't forget, you can enter the Nipex tool of the week. Even if you're not in the league or don't know a thing about football, you can still win yourself a shiny new Nipex tool. And let's be honest, that's probably more useful than my fantasy advice most weeks. Until next time, may your captains actually play, may your benches be stacked, and may Leeds continue to disappoint Rick. And just before we get to your favourite bit of the show where I reveal last week's challenge words and winners, we want to thank our premium partners. We couldn't make the news without you. First up, for all your circuit protection needs, they're like having an Italian star striker in your premiership team. It's Ludum Palazzoli. With their new award-winning Lumo consumer unit and offering complete product support from their highly trained team, it's CPN Qdis. And with over 5,000 product lines from heating, lighting, ventilation to wiring accessories, if you need it, they've got it. It's electrical distributor CED Group. And... The best thing to come out of Yorkshire since stainless steel, the home of EV Ultra and other groundbreaking and quality products, it's Doncaster Cables. Click the links in the show notes to find out more about these great brands. If you think you know the words that I've smuggled into this week's show, pop your guess into the comments. We'll take all the correct guesses and select one at random to be the winner of an eFix goodie bag prize. Answers submitted after about lunchtime on the Thursday after release will not be entered into the draw. Now let's reveal the winners of last week's Challenge Word competition. Last week's words were Firefly and Hot Pot, and I think I gave about four different possibilities in the sentence on Hot Pot, so there were a few guesses that went awry, but some did get both, and the person to come out of our electronic hat came from TikTok, and was friend of the show and supporter of our College Connections Roadshow Test Rigs UK, or Philip Haig as we know him. Well done, Phil. Click the Get Involved link in the show notes to claim your prize. And if anyone's in the market for rigs to help you with training, teaching, or assessing, check out his website, testrigsuk.co.uk.
This week, the recording studio has been powered by our friends over at Consumer Unit World, with high stock levels of your favourite consumer units, including BG, and free next working day delivery on orders over 150 quid. And we've been lit by Flex 7 with their lightning-fast pre-wired modular lighting connection system that keeps your installation times razor sharp. Don't forget to click the links in the show notes to find out more about those great sponsors. Thanks for listening to this episode of Electrical News Weekly. Make sure you subscribe to receive the next update. Thanks for listening, and until next time, have a great week. Stay safe out there, and remember, there's no such thing as a torque-calibrated arm.